Math 31, welcome to example 10. So given the graph of this function below, let's sketch its inverse. I did just a few things I want to point out. Um, this is a, a function, it passes the vertical line test, it passes the horizontal line test. Just so I have some, some consistency here, I want to talk about domains and ranges for f, and I want to talk about domains and ranges for f inverse. Those are always important to take a look at. So the domain of f looks like it starts at zero and it goes to infinity. And oops, there we go. And the range of f looks like I also start at zero and go to infinity. Well, that makes that nice. That means the domain and range for f inverse are the same. So even though they technically flip-flop, since these are both zero to infinity, they flip-flop to zero to infinity. All right. So I want to sketch this graph. Now I'm going to approach this numerically. For some of you who are more graphically minded, you can draw the line y equals x and practice doing some symmetry, some mirror imaging around that line. I find it easier for my brain to work this way. Let me go find some ordered pairs on this graph and then I'm going to reflect them. I'm going to, I'm going to swap x's and y's. So I see 0, 0 is a nice ordered pair. I see 1, 1 is a nice ordered pair. And I see, what do we have, 2, 4 is another nice ordered pair. Now, if this isn't enough for me to figure out what f inverse looks like, I can try different uh, ordered pairs. You know, I can try like 1 half, 1 half. This is like 1 and a half, 2. I, I, there's other options for me. It just, for me, when I'm working with these functions, I try and find any of the, the ordered pairs that fall on the grid mark because they're just easier numbers to deal with. All right, if I was gonna go to the inverse, I'm gonna swap x's and y's. Zero, zero reflects on itself. Oops, so just one, one, that's too bad. Ah, this one won't. So I need four comma two. So I'm gonna keep zero, zero, I'm gonna keep one, one, but I wanna go to four comma two, and that actually is gonna help me see my graph. I see that now coming out this way, all right? So I see f of x here, and I see f inverse of x over here. And let me just take my ruler and draw in y equals x. I'm gonna dot it. And as I dot it, that does look like a line of symmetry between those two functions. So I'm pretty happy with that. And just as a note, f inverse of x, right? Its domain is zero to infinity and its range is also zero to infinity. So that's looking good. I've got my inverse function graphed out. Okay, so with that, we're done with section 3.7. Let's just remind ourselves of what we learned in this section. So we should be able to verify inverse functions. That was the first thing we did back in example one. That's when you do f inverse of f of x. Does that get you back to x? and then check the symmetric version, right? f of f inverse of x, if you plug in x, you get x back out. Both of those conditions had to be met for functions to be inverses of one another. We've been talking about finding inverse functions, right? Swapping out x and y, solving for your new y, calling it the inverse. We've evaluated inverse functions. We've talked about what the symbol f inverse of 60 or f inverse of four meant. Um, we've talked about domains and ranges of inverse functions and how they relate to the domain and range of your original function. And we've also talked about graphically what an original function and its inverse look like, that they're mirror images of each other across the line y equals x. All right, so with that, we're gonna move on to chapter four. We're gonna start talking primarily about linear functions in chapter four, and you're gonna get some of your first stats lessons in chapter four. All right, gang, thanks so much. I'll see you in a few, bye.